Welcome to Go with the Code. In this video, you will learn how to use Entity Framework Core. Examples are written with C Sharp. The application uses Entity Framework Core and Rage of Pages. But as always, you should know what you do before you do it, because you do it at your own risk. With Entity Framework Core, you can connect to the database and create, read, update and delete data from the database. Entity Framework Core is better optimized than Entity Framework 6, which is the previous version of the Entity Framework. Entity Framework Core uses LinQ queries. LinQ queries are automatically generated to SQL. This is why the query performance isn't always so good. In some situations, Entity Framework creates multiple queries to the SQL Server instead of using a single query. Entity Framework Core is great for basic CRUD operations where you don't have to make complex queries. You should know SQL when you use Entity Framework Core. You can use Entity Framework Core Power Tools or Scaffold DB Context command where you want to create your database context class and entities from an existing database. Entity Framework Core supports code first data model. You can also use migrations to create a new database from the scratch. With migrations, you can also add new tables and columns into the database. Migrations can be written with SQL scripts. See more from the Microsoft website. The database context class contains the database connection, CRUD operations, tracking, mapping, model building, catching, and transaction control. An entity represents a row in a database table. An entity set represents multiple table rows. In the picture above, you can see a database model that we will use in this video. We have created the database model earlier. The picture below shows your structure of an entity class. In this case, the entity class is generated from an existing database using scaffold DP context command. You can use LinQ queries to retrieve data from the database. When you use LinQ with Entity Framework Core, first you obtain the data source, next you create a query, and finally you execute the query. LinQ has its own query syntax. There is a lot of good material about LinQ on the internet. LinQ contains methods that you can use with Entity Framework Core. Here is a list of some common methods that you can use. You can also use joins with Entity Framework Core. Here are three queries that basically makes the same thing. The first query uses LinQ query syntax. The LinQ query syntax reminds to SQL syntax. The difference is that the LinQ query syntax in this case begins with the from clause and ends to the select clause. In this example, we use the list method to execute the query. The second query uses eager loading. You should include only those entities that you need in your query. You can use SQL Server Profiler or XEvent Profiler to see how the query is generated to the SQL Server. The third query is called as a Lambda Expression. The Lambda Expression uses database relationships. You should make sure that you have created your database relationships correctly before you create a data model from your database. If a person has two pets, the person is returned twice. In this example, you can see how to add a new person into the person table. First, you create an instance of the person class. Next, you declare properties. And after that, you call the add method. The person is created when you call a save changes method. If you don't call the save changes method, the person will not be created into the database. Remember to use using statement. Here, you can see how to update an existing person row from the person table. First, you find the person from the database. Next, you update entity properties and call the update method. 
And finally, you will save the changes. The save changes method returns the number of state entries written to the database. In this example, you can see how to delete an existing person row from the person table. Entity Framework Core also supports cascade delete operation, which means that you also delete dependent and child entities. Be careful when you use cascade delete operation. Always use using statement. Microsoft has instructions on their website about that, how to make faster queries with Entity Framework Core. As mentioned before, you can misuse Entity Framework Core and make queries to run slower. You can also write raw SQL with Entity Framework Core. You can use MS SQL Server Profiler and XEvent Profiler to see the generated SQL query. You can also compare the performance of queries. Parameterized SQL statements uses SP Execute SQL when you use Entity Framework Core or Dapper. Avoid generating dynamic column names and table names. Next, we will look at the application. Let's begin. Next, we will create a new data model for the database that we have created earlier. We will use scaffold DP context command. The database contains six tables. There are relationships between tables. First, we will create a new project. We will use ASP.NET Core Web Application Project template. We give a name for the project. And for the solution, we will use .NET 5. Next we install new packages. First we install Entity Framework Core Tool Package. And SQL Server Package. And finally we execute scaffold DP context command. We will create a new folder. The folder name is test dp data model. When the process is ready, we can see new folders. The folder contains database context class and entity classes. Each database table has its own entity. Each database column has its own property inside the class. The database context class contains DP sets, database connection, configuration, column properties, foreign keys. The default delete operation is client set null. We used cascade delete operation in our example. And finally, we have created a new data model for our test database. The only difference compared to the application that we saw in a previous video is that instead of using data models, the application uses entities. The data access layer contains the database context class and every repository class uses entity framework to create, read, update and delete data from the database. Next we can see what happens when the user clicks the save button from the person create page. But first we will open the X event profiler with standard mode. 
when the user clicks the save button. First, the application maps the view model into the entity model. And after that, the application saves the person into the database using Entity Framework Core. We can see newly added person ID. And finally, the application redirects the user into the person search page. But if we open the X event profile, here we can see the SQL that the application executes into the database. We can also see CPU time, reads, writes and duration. And finally the application returns us to the search page. And finally, we can see what happens when the user clicks the search button from the search page. But first, we will open MS SQL Server Profiler. If you have many active databases on your server, you can also use column filters. When the user clicks the search button, the application first maps the view model into the data model and after that the application executes the query. In this case, Entity Framework uses link you to search people from the database. And now if we open MS SQL Server Profiler, we can see the SQL query that Entity Framework Core has generated. And finally, the application returns the result to the view. And now we are ready. Until we code again. Bye.